Hello boys and girls, Pearl of Wisdom here from BPOW X in my lovely abode. And apparently my last NHL video that I did, and we are looking at FanDuel's lines for every team for season totals. Um, and the last one I did for the Islanders, the audio didn't work all that well. So we got that corrected though. And now we're going to be doing the Philadelphia Flyers. We already did the Carolina Hurricanes. And we already did the New York Rangers. And like I said, we did the Islanders. I may redo that one so the audio sounds better. But until then, we're going to go into FanDuel. And we're going to look at the line that is going that there is. And we're going to be looking at a ton of analytics. I'm a professional sports handicapper. If you don't know what that is, uh, people pay me to give them bets. Then they make money. And there's much glee in the land. That's what happens. And you can be part of that if you want, actually, for free right now. I'll put the link in the uh, description. It's a Telegram link. You just hit it. You go over there. I let people sit there sometimes for like a month or more just to get comfortable because it's a little bit far. You really are making money gambling? Really? Really? You can like invest this way? Yes, every year, every sport, we make money at all the time. Right now in MLB, we are up 126 units, and I'll explain what units and all that stuff are, but for the most clients, it's that's about $11,600 they've made in just about three months. So, all right, so we're going to be looking at Philadelphia Flyers. The interesting thing here is we get to see why I believe analytically they are going to do well or not do well. The Philadelphia Flyers are a very difficult team to assess, and we'll look at the re that. Uh, we're going to look at their forwards, we're going to look at their defensemen, and then I'll make my prediction. All right, let's start off with FanDuel. FanDuel has the Philadelphia Flyers at 74.5. Points, which is really interesting considering they last year had seventy five points. So they're basically thinking that they're gonna do something similar as they did last year. And I'm on the fence here. Um, there's several reasons also other than the analytics we're going to look at. First of all, Tortorella is an amazing coach. They probably shouldn't have had that many points last year. I think overall their team could be better this year. Now, the issue we have is that most of the teams, especially in their division, got better. Uh, Carolina certainly did. Uh, New Jersey. We also did New Jersey already as well. Um and uh, Pittsburgh probably got better. But so, and in the East in general, Ottawa, Detroit, a lot of the teams got better. But Philadelphia could have got significantly better. All right, so I already have it out here for uh, Noah Cates. I wanted to bring him up right away. First of all, we'll look at, he's the second line center right now for the Philadelphia Flyers. He kind of played first line last year, uh, but... We have Sean Couturier coming up, and we're going to look at him. But I wanted to show you this Noah, Noah Cates kid, man. 24 years old. He had a bit of a drop-off in offense last year, but he is freaking elite defensively. Elite. I didn't even – I knew he was a good two-way guy, but when I started looking at the analytics – this is Jay Fresh, by the way. I highly recommend – Jay Fresh for analytics. I have other analytics that I looked at as well to do a team and even players as well, different. But this is Jay Fresh has been the biggest help to me ever since I started using his analytics. My sports handicapping has gone through the roof. This guy, he's fantastic. So, anyways, his even strength defense is completely elite. His his offense has kind of dropped a little bit. It's it seems like he's sort of Putting himself in a in that uh, like Eck from Minnesota somewhere like that like an elite defensive forward that can pot you a couple goals. I love him and I wanted to show him right off the top because I think it would just surprise a lot of people to see how good he is, how it really is. Now Couturier did not play last year, 
But fortunately, with JFresh, we got another cool little feature here. First of all, we'll look at the whole line here. Atkinson also didn't play um, and really didn't play much last year as well. So I went to the 2020-21 season when he was playing for the Columbus Blue Jackets, and I looked at his analytics there. It didn't change much when he went to Philadelphia. He's a decent player. He's okay. He's got... He could do well to do better defensively, but his offense certainly makes up for it quite a bit. Um, he's your average first-line guy. Now, the question is going to be, how is the injury, how is he going to be now that he's been injured like he, for as long as he has? Is, is he going to really recover? And this is the big question mark with Philadelphia. Uh, when you're doing an over-under for their season, you also have Couturier. I went back to 2021. This is another thing that, like I said, JFresh gives you is these historical timelines. Um, and I find them fantastic. As you can see, you know, there was a time back in like 1819 when Sean Couturier was almost Bergeron-like forward and defensively. And every year he kind of started slipping defensively a little bit and then he, he got injured really bad. Uh, probably because he was struggling a little bit. But, I mean, he's an elite center. He hasn't played in a year. He's 28 years old, so he's a little younger. I, I honestly don't know what he's going to look like this year. If he can even get 80% of what he was, this Philadelphia Flyers team is going to be a lot stronger than I believe a lot of people are gonna, probably going to assess them to be. Because uh, you've got Noah Cates, I just showed you pretty much an elite defensive center. And if Couturier can get, you know, back almost close to the same, he, his defense will probably be just as good, as long as his life can keep up. You've got two shutdown centers right off the top. I mean, not too shabby. All right, let's look at Owen Tippett. Um, Owen Tippett, they got from the Florida Panthers, of course, in the Giroux deal. Um he is, uh, he's 24 years old. It, he's, he's been kind of, he was kind of buried in the Florida system there. And I think his development got a little bit stalled, but he went off pretty good last year, especially as a, offensively. Um, it appears that Tortorella has did something he normally doesn't do with forwards and basically said, don't worry about defense kid right now. Just, I need, we want you to get that shot out there. He's got an incredible blistering shot. Just focus on your offense, and uh, we'll work on the defense afterwards. As you can see, his even even strength defense is pretty pretty low. But if Couturier can come back anywhere near like he used to, that'll probably help Owen Tippett a lot. So his trajectory, they have him at a 60% war. Now, war means wins above replacement as a second liner. So he would, he, he would be considered above average. Uh, above average second line winger in the NHL as it stands right now with a tremendous amount of upside. The thing that I found funny was he actually has kind of a low finishing uh, for a guy who's got a shot like he does. So we could see improvement in that. And this little blue line here, this shows you like when he was in Florida, his finishing wasn't very good, which means he was getting because uh, I remember when he was in Florida, he was getting shots off, but they just weren't going in. And now you can see this big spike as soon as he starts playing with Tortorella and getting confidence. So I could see that still going up yet. You know, he's got a look of a guy that could probably score, you know, like he almost got 30 last year. I could see him getting 35, 30 to 35. So... That's not too shabby, and we haven't even looked at Farabee yet. And I really thought Farabee was going to be much better than he was right now, than he has become so far. I mean, he has all the tools. As you can see here, he's got his goals per 60 is pretty good. His assists per 60 is pretty good. He, he's sort of a guy that he doesn't really drive offense. He's about... 50% is not bad. He's only 23 years old. He's still got a lot of work to do defensively on his whole game in general. But as you can see here with the projected war at 65%, that's not bad for a second line 
winger. Uh, he's still got tons of room to for upside here. And this is why it makes it difficult to me to decide what the Philadelphia Flyers are going to be. My gut says they're going to be better than people think. That's what my gut says. As long as everybody can hold together, you know, because Sean Couturier could be out after 20 games or Atkinson, and then they're back to the where, where, where they were before. But when you look at the two lines so far, it's actually not looking too bad. It, it's not it's not terrible. It's not terrible. Um, and we'll look at Konechny, and there's been a lot of, there's been kind of rumors about Konechny uh, being on the block. And, and I think if, if things go really south and don't do well, I think he could very well be on the block somewhere down the road. Um, and I think the big reason is this red number right here. Travis Konechny is diabolically bad defensively. It's been something that every coach has complained about with him. And last year, he went down to even worse than he ever was. Now, here's the thing, though. Again, just like I said with Tippett, people uh, like people would never think this when you're talking about Tortorella. But if he believes a guy needs to get confidence in offensively, he will say, you know what, don't worry about it. We'll just let's get you scoring first and then we'll work on the defense. So you can see this kind of bounce back a little bit. 2021, he was he was an average player. His offense wasn't fantastic, but it kept on it's it's kind of gone up and it really shot up last year. Especially the finishing went hard. So that means that that's usually confidence where you're getting shots and they're finally going in where they didn't before. Um, his goals per 60 and his assists per 60 are fantastic. Like He's a great power play guy. He's got all the tools again. It's just about getting the whole game to where it can be. He's not bad. He's not a bad player as a winger in the league right now. He's not bad. But I, I just think he can be way better. And if you look at the eye test, like people will watch him and they'll say, like, because when I talk about him on my show, um, people get mad at me because you say, well, well, how can you say that? You're, I watch the games. Do you watch Travis Konechny? Yeah, I see what you do. I see he's got all the tools. He just needs to know where to be on the ice better. And especially now, okay, you got your offense up. You can't be having a 5% even strength defense. That just basically means you're taking way too many risks. And uh, I think you could see that change. He seems willing Um so there's a lot to work with. It's not that I don't like Connect Me at all. Absolutely. I think he's he's just got too much talent to give up on, that's for sure. And he's still pretty decent. All right, let's look at Scott Lawton. I love this guy. I think a lot of people love this guy. I heard rumors about him being on the trade block, and I was like, why would you trade Lawton? My gosh. Uh, it's not coming up. There we are, Scott Lott. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, I love this guy. Now, the thing, again, this was a guy in 2020-21 who was absolutely a beast defensively. And look at last year, two years ago, dropped, moved up a little bit. Sort of the same thing. Tortorella likes to take players and say, look, I think we can get more offense out of you. Don't worry about defense right now. I want you to get a feel for your offense and know where you got to be on the ice. And then I want you to get in the shape you need to get back and be a defensive player. I just think you're going to have to see a defensive rebound from Scott Lawton here. Um, but you have to appreciate he's got he's a much better offensive player than people give him credit for from the, as, as a second-line winger. Um, and most of that is in driving offense. Scott Lawton, look at his goals per 60 and his assists per 60 are not that great. And you're thinking, well, how can you say he's a good offensive player? I'm talking about driving offense. If you can drive offense at 82%, it means that you are putting your line mates in a position to score. You are doing the things that get your line in an offensive position to score. And sometimes that doesn't come out as points. Um, there are several players as we go through this that you're going to find that. 
that you're like, well, they only got like 30, 33 points last year. Yes, but they drive offense. They they do things in the offensive zone to keep the puck in. Um, and that's what Scott Lawton is. He He's a possession guy. He possess, He's really good at possessing in the offensive zone. Um, he brings his defense up to where it was before. And, I mean, he's a fantastic player. I certainly wouldn't want to trade him unless – I got a really, really good return, and they probably that's why they didn't trade him because nobody was giving offering uh, something that was worth what Scott Lawton is. Um, interesting player, and like I said, these when you look at all when you go down all these lines, and if you look at all my videos that I do, um, you're going to see that like Philadelphia Flyers compared to a lot of teams that might be on the bottom of the league are a little better than people are giving them credit for. I find. Uh, Morgan Frost um, had a better year last year. He, you know, he kind of put up some pretty decent points. He's kind of a good assist guy. I personally, well, I never really was a fan of eye test wise, and it, it's kind of showed up here as well. Um, I don't know what he where he's going to end up. I personally think that eventually, as they bring up young players, Morgan Frost is going to get lost. Uh, probably moved. To and and you know maybe a late bloomer type guy somewhere in San Jose, but I don't think he's going to stick. That's just my personal opinion. He's not overly big guy. He's not great on the power play. He's not used on the penalty kill. He's he's like a thirteenth forward for the most part, and this is where it gets tough because I mean he's he's playing in your third line. He's probably he's we're getting to the point now where we're seeing the lack of depth. They they're not bad top six, but once you get into the third line, it's like oh mm, boy, you know. And they don't have much. Oh uh, well, they do actually. We'll look at also some players that uh, will might be able to take a spot here, and I think they will. Uh, Wade Allison, you should, I you love watching the guy. He's full of energy and all of that, but. There's not much to his game. He, he drives offense not bad from the fourth line. Um, his goals per 60 is okay. He's got a good shot. You know, he's big, and he does some things, but his overall game is pretty blah, pretty blah. He's like a first shoot, get in there, run up and down the wing, hit people, not a high IQ. You know, I thought I would be more of a fan than I am of his. And I don't really see how there's much upside here. He probably will be moving on somewhere along the line. He, he'll probably be a journeyman his whole career. That's personally what I think about that. Um, Delorier, who they brought in for an exorbitant amount of money. Uh, and I think mostly the, the Delorier signing was, um, like, he, he's pretty good even strength defense. He doesn't provide offense. He's your basic fourth liner, you know, but he's very replaceable. The thing about Delorier, and I believe the reason why he got paid as well as he did, is this is a guy that brings an attitude to a room. He holds everybody accountable. He works his ass off. And and from all I under, from what I understood, there was a serious room problem. I mean, Tortorella basically said it in uh, Philadelphia, and he. This is a guy that's just not going to accept that. He's not going to accept complaining. He's not going to accept, uh, you know, infighting and all that kind of stuff like that. He'll just rock your head and say, "Get the, f you know, fuck off. We got to we got something to do. Grow up, you know. That's what Delorier will do, and he will do it in such a way that it'll work. I've heard this from everywhere he's been. That's the reason why everybody loves him. Is he keeps everybody on the level and focused on the task rather than stupid little infighting and all that kind of stuff like that that I do believe that was going on in Philadelphia before he got there. So sometimes off-ice stuff is more important than on-ice stuff. And, you know, I, I got ribbed because I thought it was a, you know, overpayment, but I got it because of the type of guy he was. He's not going to be there when they're good, you know. Delore is not going to be filling the spot. They're going to have guys taking his spot, no doubt about it. And then you bring in a guy like Palin is sort of the same kind of thing, but a younger version. Uh, oops. I always forget how his name is spelled. 
Ryan Palin. He's like a younger version, but he's a little better. He's a little better player on the ice. And he's a different kind of guy like that. He's more humorous. He's funny. He keeps the room light, but he keeps people honest at the same time. I don't mind this play. He's a good penalty killer. Um, he doesn't cost all that much money now at $1.4 million, and it's only for one year, so you can give him a shot at that. Um, not a bad deal. Not a bad player. And, you know, it, it's an improvement on the fourth line. Now, there's one guy, and I believe he's going to be playing third line. I really do. I think he should be. And I, don't, I think he should have been playing third line everywhere he plays. They play him as a fourth liner. Look at his even strength defense from the fourth line. The guy is fantastic. Garnet Hathaway. If I were, um, yeah, I think he got like $2 million or something like that. He's worth every penny. If I was Toronto, instead of signing a guy like Reeves, I would have had Garnet Hathaway. I love this guy for the bottom six. And I, I think he's finally going to get his chance to play on a third line here when we look at Philadelphia, like some of the players like Frost and guys like that, that they are they are playing on the third line. Garnet Hathaway should easily be able to take that spot. He's not even bad for driving offense. He could play five. His five-on-five five offense is, is not – I could even see him playing higher in the lineup every once in a while. He's a guy that can move everywhere. He's physical. He plays hard, but he knows how to do it right. He doesn't just run around – uh, hitting people like crazy, and he's a guy that might be able to help Allison become a better player because that's what Allison could be, I think, if he could see it, visualize what it means to not just run around and try to hit people and chase the puck and put yourself out of position. Garnet Hathaway is perfect at that. I thought it was a fantastic signing. I'm surprised there, was, uh, there wasn't more teams that didn't uh, pick him up. All right, so now we're going to look at their defense really quick, and then I'll give my prediction. Um, you have first the first one I want to look at it is is a guy that is is an X factor to whether they can get over that seventy four point five points, and that's Cam York. This kid improves every time I watch him play, right from the time when he was in college. Uh, his improvement every year just blew my mind. And I don't think that's going to change. He's a fantastic offensive player. At 22 years old, he already has a 67% even strength defense over replacement on a second pair. I, I, think, I don't know what the ceiling is for this guy. Um, I don't even want to put a ceiling on York. I think he's going to be better next year and you see your, his projected war. At 22 years old, this guy is a stud, and a lot. I know there was a lot of, uh, you know, just there was a lot of talk and disappointment that they didn't pick uh, what's his name out of Montreal. Uh, the top of my head, now I can't remember, and they took Cam York instead. But he is shutting everybody up. Well, at least they should be, because he is absolutely fantastic. That's this is where it kind of falls off quite a bit, though. Um, I did want to mention, Travis, uh, we'll look at Sandheim and Ristolainen. Um, Sandheim is a lot, he gets a lot of flack there in uh, Philadelphia. I mean, almost every Philadelphia Flyer fan I know of is not a fan. He did have a down year last year, though. Um, his defense, his even strength defense slipped a lot. Um, his even strength offense was okay, but he's not a bad second pair defense. Um, 6.3 million might be a little steep, but what concerns me is that fall off last year, which makes me wonder if he is a guy that can handle a guy like Tortorella. Maybe, I don't know. Um, I'm not there, but I do know that people have been poo-pooing over this guy. And I, his Analytically, he has been fine. He's not going to crush you, and I think that's the reason why people like to have those you know, big hitting, stuff like that. And that can be all fine and dandy, but sometimes those big hitter guys like Truba and the New York Rangers and Sherratt, they're terrible defensemen. Or not very good defensemen, let's put it that way. Uh, Risk the lining came a long way last year defensively. Look at this. Boom. Way up. Way up. Um, the only reason why he's sitting at 62% is because this takes the average of three years. He 
went off last year defensively. Is he a great defenseman? No, but it's way better than it was before. He's not going to bring you much offense, but if he can provide um, defense like he did last year and keep on growing as a player, you can kind of like wipe your brow and go, phew, thank God. You know, we, we're not throwing $5.1 million away for four years. You know, and he can bring the pain. And there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with bringing pain, especially if you can put up defensive numbers like that if you do it in the right way. And he came out and did that last year. I got to say, I mean, I poo-pooed on that guy quite a bit. But when I'm, when you see something like change like that, you got to give the guy credit. Um, they went out and got stall. I think that was more for, again, attitude and in the room and stuff like that because he's not very good. Whoops, I didn't. Yeah, that's right. He's not very good. Uh, I just wanted to show you that real quick. Uh, he doesn't provide all that much anymore. He's more of a room guy. I, I'm really not sure. I, I think he can help the player, young. I think he can help player the young players a lot because he knows what to do. His body just can't do what you need to do anymore. So, um. And that's where it's really going to get tough for, for Philadelphia. Well, we won't look at Sealer and Walker right now, but they're like average to below average. Uh, it, it's not, they're replaceable. No doubt about that. Defense, the defensemen are still going to be an issue in Philadelphia, no doubt about it. They're going to be asking a lot of their forwards, and it's going to be kind of a tough go, no doubt about it, especially if Carter Hart can't get back to, you know, get up to where we all expect him to be. Because uh, you got Cal Peterson there. That's not going to help you out too much. I mean, he's been absolute an absolute disaster. If by some miracle he can get to an average goaltender, then I think they're okay. But the big thing that uh, there's a big other question mark or X factor, and that is can Tyson Forster, Forster come over and take – one of these spots on the third line, like say Wade Allison or, um, you know, maybe even up here on the second line. And, and of course we saw Cutter Gutche, Goche last year, just absolutely crushed in, uh, in college and at the world juniors. And he's got an incredible shot. Is he going to need a word? some time in the AHL. I mean, if those guys go off, that's the X factor I'm talking about. This is a, That's the reason why I'm not sure about the 74.5. Um, can Couturier get back to where he was? If Atkinson can get, you know, back close to where he was or somewhere around there, this team might be able to go over 74.5. Um, it's, it's very possible. I'm saying under, but honestly, I probably wouldn't touch this. I probably wouldn't touch it. I just, I probably wouldn't touch this bet. But if you want to go for it, go for it. That's my full 42. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great day. Okay.